Uh, I want to talk about Ricky Hatton against um, Junior Witter. I, I'm a, a big fan of both. I really was. Um, watching them both coming through in the, the British boxing scene meant 20 odd years ago. Um, I suppose we had a. I mean, I remember Richard Hatton, or Richard Hatton as he was known years ago for. for um, uh, there was a gym called Sales West in Manchester. Um, there was a lad in my gym called Michael Sykes who um, got to the semi-finals of the boys' clubs and he fought an Asian kid. Uh, and if he'd have beat this Asian kid, he'd have fought Hatton. Um, Michael Sa Sykes lost. And uh, I remember being then Ricky Hat Richard Hatton, as he was known, then broke his ribs in like about 22 seconds. He was getting kids crying. Um, so you always knew. Ricky Hatton was going to go on and um, <clears throat> be special. Uh, he, Ricky Hatton turned over pro 97. I suppose people started hearing noises about him, about the millennium, when he was winning like intercontinental titles. Um, out of the two, Junior Witter, um, I suppose, was the first one to, to get to that level. When um, he, he stepped up to the plate and he faced Zab Judah, who um, was at the time one of the <clears throat> one of the pound for pound best in the world, uh, certainly the, the best at the at the division he was, and um, I think it was a really brave move of Junior Witter to step up and and take the fight, which is actually it was only at nine days' notice as well, and uh, you, you know he literally stepped in the ring and fought for a world title, where he'd never even at that point fought for a, a British title. Um, Lost, lost quite. I think it was a wide points decision, if I remember rightly. It was on the undercard of Mike Tyson against Lou Saravizi, uh, Hamden Park in April two thousand. And uh, Junior Junior uh, kind of certainly put his, you know, his, his stock, if you like, really raised from the fight. Uh, and it's no surprise, really. I mean, I watched that fight the other night, and it's no great surprise that Zab Judah never give uh, Junior uh, the rematch. Um, yeah, the styles were very similar, and um, although he got the win, you know, it, it was it was an awkward night's work, really, when it was, should have been a walkover. And uh, you know, after that, what's what's Junior where what is a massive credit was he went on a, a fifteen fight. Um, not only was it a fifteen fight unbeaten run, but it was um, fifteen fights of knockouts, and in that time. Um, that seen him win the British Commonwealth and European. Um, so he certainly did it the proper way. Um, none of this IBO, WBF, WBU, um, intercontinental, European, you know, some belts you can win playing snakes and ladders. Uh, you know, so the, they were coming through together when Hatton was beating the likes of um, Eamon McGee and John Thaxton. Uh, Junior was literally winning all his, you know, his Alan Temples, winning, beating the Italian for the European belt, and uh, and and basically it was coming through, and it looked like the fight just had to happen. Um, you know, two thousand and five, Hatton was uh, won the world title against Costa Zoo. Uh, Junior won his the year after. Um, he won it for the, you know, people know I was fought the four belts. Um, the most prestige one is the green one. That's the the WBC. That's the one that Muhammad Ali had. Uh, you know, that's the one kind of in box and knowledge as as the best. Uh, and Junior Witter won that. He won the vacant um, WBC because Floyd Mayweather, rather than face him, uh, stepped up stepped up a weight, and um, so Junior fought for that fight and won. And uh, you know, it's criminal, really. You know, I know the history. With Hatton and Witter, they don't like each other very much. Um, but from a, from a pure boxing fan, um, it's it's you know the, <clears throat> not only were the two prospects kind of coming through at the same time and doing big things in the British, the Commonwealth, the European, um, the other lesser belts, but they were they were world champions at the same time for for a couple of years. Um, obviously, Junior defended his belt against, uh, I can't pronounce his name off the top of my head. Uh, and then he beat Vicious, vicious Vivian Harris. Um, would go on to lose 
a split decision against Tim Bradley. Um, a lot of people had never heard of Tim Bradley at the time in t 2008. Um, obviously, he would go on to become a Hall of Famer, beat the likes of Manny Pacquiao. And it was a split decision, you know, so... Um, that that def that loss on Junior's record is a lot is a, a kind of not as it's a lot better now looking back to what Tim Tim Bradley actually went on to do, and uh, obviously you know it it just wasn't to be and was the politics in boxing did Hatton really dislike Witter that much where he just said you know I'm not going to fight you um, <clears throat> you know in my opinion I mean listen I'm, I'm the biggest Ricky Hatton fan in the world I really am. But I just, you know, for the life of me, and I spoke to a lot of other people as well who really, really know boxing, people like Alex Morrison, um, a few others, and I just think, you know, maybe Hatton would have beat Witter, but it wouldn't have been easy. I, I believe his style would have really all been wrong for him. Um, he was awkward, you know, you couldn't have hit Junior with a handful of gravel. He was quick, he punched hard, um... You know, how how do you train for somebody like that? Very much like um, Harold Bomber Graham, you know, Nigel Ben, uh, and certainly Chris Eubank went on record and said, why would you want to fight someone who you can't hit? And um, I, I just think it would have, you know, regardless of who would have won, um, I think it would have, you know, people... I've heard Ricky Hatton say, you know, he needs to step up to the plate and... What does he bring? He doesn't sell tickets. But the fact of the matter is, we're talking about facts here, and you're talking about Junior Witter, who was a, a was a WBC light welterweight champion, and out the four belts, that was the number one. Uh, you know, that's just that's just a fact. You know, so when when Ricky had um, was beating Carlos Mauser and Costa Zou for the um, what were the IBF and the WBA. Um, Junior had the WBO, and um, you know it's, it's sad at the time because Gavin Reese, another British light ten stone, uh, light welterweight, he held um, he held the WBA, I think, you know, and it was like what a great time for for boxing. It's really sad that none of them fought each other, and obviously Hatton Witter, you know, I mean, Junior was in my house of the week and uh, I was listening to some of the things he was saying and I've got my own assumptions on it, obviously, you know, because I, I I read the boxing news every week. I studied boxing. I watched it, um, you know, like like most years I watched, I watched the fights week in, week out. And, um, you know, I just think it, it was very much like Kel Brook and Amir Khan. I actually think Witter Hatton is the greatest, the biggest fight British boxing's never seen. Um, certainly in my life, <clears throat> certainly in my lifetime, and um, regardless of how, what you you know, yes, was Junior Witter wasn't never had the level of support Ricky Hatton did because nobody in Britain has um, ever had that kind of Ricky Hatton following, um, you know. But that fight for me was pay per view. All day, and what you got to remember is, well, that fight was that fight was being spoken about. Um, as I said, Hatton went, I think he turned pro about uh, the end of '97, and that fight on the was uh, Hatton against Witter was on the cards from 1999. Um, so you know you've got your your Hatton fought Manny Pacquiao in 2009. So you literally got ten years there of that fight been talked about, spoken about, <sighs> you know, it, uh, I watched a video the day of um, Junior Wynn and Ricky turned up, shadow boxing in the ring, they turned up at each, each other's press conferences, slagging each other off, and, um, you know, it, regardless of who who you who your man was or who you thought was going to win, and it, it's a massive, massive fight, and it's really sad now that they're both finishing, you just think, you know, what a... You know that, that 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 should have been another Eubank Ben. It should have been another George Groves against Froch. Uh, they should have really probably have had a trilogy. Um, you know, as I said, I, I really think that that I think Witter was all wrong for him. Um, would Hatton have just bowled him out in, the, in a round or two, or 
Oh, would would a would a junior frustrated him and tied him in knots and got the points win? You know, we'll never know. And um, you know, our our, our the, the British boxing fans, it's, it's a real um, it's a sad one really when you think about it that none of the, they never ever took took the fight on. Uh, yeah, you know, but I know Hatton was saying the other day he fancies an exhibition with um, Oscar De La Hoya or Cotto. You know, I, I read I read that and uh, I just thought, you know what, exhibition, get Hatton, uh, Witter, you know, the, imagine how many people would love to see that, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure Junior looks after himself, lives a life and, uh, you know, better late than never, I suppose. I think Junior Witter is about 47 and Hatton's about 42, 43. Um, yeah, it would have been, you know, who, who's to say, but I, I think the likelihood is it's gone and, um it's summer. We we never got a scene, but it would have been really, really been one hell of a fight. And uh, the reason I want to talk about it is the fact um, I'm going to be starting Junior Witter's biography um, in about six months' time, started next year. And um, I'm going to look at all this. I'm going to look at all. I'm going to research why didn't it happen. I'm going to listen to speak to people in the boxing game, I'm going to speak to Junior, you know, Junior Witter actually had the, the money, um, the Floyd Mayweather fight, like three times, uh, he had it in 2002, when it was probably a bit too too early for him, uh, I could have had it again in 2006, and I think there was another time, maybe 2004, and uh, I think Mayweather fought Carlos Baldadier, if I'm right, but, uh, you know, Junior, he's got one hell of a story. And what what really appeals to me writing Junior Witter's book was um, he was a, like a proper fighter. And what, what I mean by that was British Commonwealth European and WBC world champion. And even even when his career had seen better days, he wasn't afraid to go back and go in prize fighters. And, you know, even when he'd been uh, a world champion, he'd come back then. Uh, and 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 won another British title, and you know, so there's not many fighters that would have had the fire in the bellies to think, hang on a minute, I've already been a world champion. Why would I want to come back and fight Conor Lyons for the British title? And why would I want to go in prize fighter and face Kevin McIntyre? And um, you know, so and he lived his he lived the life. Um, you know, that's one thing I suppose in Junior Witter, in the Witter story that is different from the Hatton <clears throat> was. Um, Junior was never, I don't think he was ever out the ring, uh, when obviously Ricky, you know, would go up several stones over. But, um, you know, regarding the Junior Witter story, he's a proper, he's a proper, um, you know, if Ricky Hatton was Luke, was Luke Skywalker, then Junior Witter had to portray himself as, as Darth Vader. And uh, when everyone, when Ricky, when Ricky was everyone's mate and he had a pint with everyone, Junior knew that he was clever enough to say, "He's a good guy, so I'm going to play the pantomime buddy, and uh, I'm going to reinvent myself as this." You know, at the end of the day, if you type in Junior with his name on Google, the images will come up as Ricky Hatton, uh, and maybe vice versa. You know, I know Ricky went on to do a lot of things in, in boxing and had an amazing career and got the big fights, which Junior Witten never did. Um, you know, the, the pay-per-view fights, um, which is very, very sad, really, and it's no fault of Junior Witten's own. When you're, when you're, when you're beating who's put in front of you, and um, you've got the same promoters as well at the time, Frank Warren, and, and you are the WBC world champion, and you've, you've just knocked out v- vicious Vivian Harris, and, you know, then... Yeah, you know, it's it's there's a lot of politics in boxing and um you know it, it's I, I personally don't think it was down to Junior Witter, you know, because you know, Hatton Witter would have been a pay per view. Um you know, there's another story that um Junior had the I mean you can fight, took it and he was like, Yeah, get me the fight, just took it straight away. Before the negotiations, um this was at a certain point, I think it was about 2009, maybe 2008. Um, maybe around the time Cam was knocked out by that hard punching um, Prescott from from Colombia. So, you know, there's he, he didn't have any luck in the big fights Junior were, um, but what a career he had. You know, and in boxing he he did it all. 
uh, won national titles as an amateur and um, went on to pro. And you can't get better than winning the British Commonwealth European and the WBC title. Um, so fair play. I mean, he's still in boxing today. He's still, he's still training. Um, you know, I get offered all kinds of books. Um, there's a lot, lots of books I've been offered and never took. And, uh, and straight away, when I got talking to one of Junior's mates, I said, I fancy that story. Um, you know, because I see that kind of captivating the British headlines. I see Junior on Talk Sport and all this. And, you know, listen, I know there's a lot of Ricky Hatton fans out there and, you know, Junior will might get stick, but, the, the, you know, there's there was a lot of years. There's a, there's a lot of stories around that subject, Ricky Hatton against Junior Witter, that even though they never fought in the ring, um, in the gloves, you could you could probably write a book on on that alone. Um, and obviously, Junior Witter was among um, the very famous Ingle camp, your Nassim Ahmed's, your Johnny Nelson's, your Ryan Rhodes. Uh, Brenda Lingles, your your Asian Pickerings, um, yeah, you know, you, so you could imagine some of the stories he's got, um, some of the sparring stories, you know. So for anyone anyone out there who's just a um, a pure boxing fan like myself, you know, you you want to listen, you want to realize what what goes on in the boxing world, and you know, and then, and then I mean, I I know obviously because I've I've spoke to a lot of people and uh, I've I've followed the game over the years, but when you're inside that game and as a professional fighter, there's there's things you, you don't hear and uh, there's a lot of skullduggery, there's a lot of moving the goalposts, um, you know, so I, I, I'm going to be, re it's going to be really intriguing to, to, you know, purely just down to being a, a pugilistic fan and thinking, you know, what does a fighter, what's his daily routine, getting up, you're jogging, your dinner in the, your gym and then you train on the night and six days a week or whatever, but... You know, regardless, um, ju junior winner. You know whether whether you you despise him because you're Ricky Hatton's number one fan, or regardless, he he got to the top of his um, the sport. You know, he was, he was pinnacle at the top of his career, and and any any weight category in in British but in, in world boxing, you don't get any better than um, being the world boxing uh, WBC champion of the world. Um, because it is, it's the most elite of them all out of the four titles, and Junior got there. Um, so he didn't do too bad for a lad who grew up on the estate of Bradford. But uh, his story fascinates me; it really, really does. And um, I'm looking forward to. As I said, I spent a few, an hour or something with him the other week. And um, when when I I've got one or two books, I've got three books to do actually before then. But uh, when I, you know, in the new year. I want to like, you know, I see his story going viral, um, you know, because I, I, for what he's done and he's achieved in the game, um, he probably doesn't get the credit he deserves, which is quite sad, really, when you think of, you know, there's there's fighters out there who've, who've not done half as as much as what Junior Witter did and uh, the household names. And, uh, you know, you know, credit to them, people, because you've got to take what you, what you can in life. Um, you know, there's some very famous fighters on there with pundits and uh, good luck to them. But then, you know, they never, they never did to what actually Junior Witter did. And um, you know, he told me there were stories facing top top elite fighters when he shouldn't have been in the ring. Uh, one story, I think it was his dad was ill or he died or summer. Um, took the fight, should have should have cancelled. Um, took fights. The Frankie Gavin one is a. There's a few stories behind that, and you think, you know, but you don't realise that. Us, the paying public, you don't realise. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be something that I'm, I'm really going to be interested in. Um, there's a Facebook page actually on um, the book, so the book's going to be called Junior Witter Hyphen The Avoided. Um, clues in the name, because I think he was, <clears throat> you know, when he was, um, even before he was a WBC. Um, you know, and Hatton was saying he wasn't going to face him and his fight with um, Torres didn't come off. Even when he was British Commonwealth European, I mean, to have 15 fights and 15 knockouts at British Commonwealth European standard, that's some achievement. Um, not only 15 wins, no, nobody went the distance. And, um, you know, and he beat literally the cream of, of Europe. 
uh, and nobody really wanted to fight him. It was a case of who's who. Um, you know, he was a bit like, well, do I really want him? Uh, and, you know, and it, it's sad. And um, that obviously paid evidently in his career where, you know, he was just the avoided. Um, he really, really was. Um, many fighters over the years have, have been the same, but I, I can't think of many than Junior Witter. You know, even when you're the elite, you've got the best world title in the world out the lot. Um and you can't actually get the big fights. So it's quite sad. But um, myself as a writer, as, a, as an author, I want to find out those reasons. Uh, and, and as a boxing fan as well, I want to find out. Um, and I, I'm going to spend a lot of time with Junior. I'm probably going to sit with him for... Uh, well, I'm probably going to have to talk to him for at least 20 hours, 20 plus hours to do this book. Um but yeah, you know, the, uh, the dare say there may be a, a few faces I might have to speak to as well. Your Johnny Nelson's, your Kel Brooks. Um, you know, we, we're talking about we'll possibly do the forward for him. But uh, it's a book that, I, you know, as I said, I, I do get offered quite a lot now. Um, and it was as soon as this come up, I was like, yeah, see, you know, and, and obviously, you know, touch wood, it's, uh, it's going to come up. Well, it, it, you know, we're, um, we've negotiated and that and it's looking good. Can, and I think, you know, I want to get a story out. And, and even if I wasn't a writer, I would have... I would have picked this book up and thought, well, yeah, I know. I, I watched it. Yeah, I, knew, I knew all about British boxing, uh, but I wanted to know his side. You know, Junior Witter was very much part of that, the British boxing scene, um, you know, when there was the Hattons about, when there were Joe Calzaghi's and, um, yeah, so, so many, many Kevin Mitchells and all this. And I would always look forward to Junior Witter fights. Um, I don't, you know, you'd having met him a couple of times now. He's not actually what you actually think because we've seen the way he was in the ring, the arrogant swagger, the cockiness. You could listen to the ring walk music. He's the the haircut he had, um, and yet you, you, you know to actually spend a bit of time with him, you think you're not actually like how I thought you were. Um, but that's boxing, isn't it? It's you know. It's a, it's a macho image and everybody wears a mask. And I suppose he had to do that. He had to be this guy who was cocksure of himself, who radiated um, arrogance. But uh, as a person, I don't find him like that at all. And uh, he's actually a, a really, really nice guy. So, yeah, I mean, it's a book that I'm really, really uh, quite excited about. Um, I've, I've got to a level now where I don't have to take a lot of people's books, but straight away I was like, yeah. Junior with a book, as I have done with just Alan Thompson. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Celtic fan, and uh, Alan was a big, big hero of mine. And, and regarding boxing, I'm like one of the biggest boxing fans you can get. And uh, as I said, Junior Witter was a proper fighter, um, a guy who did it, did it all in British boxing. And uh, he's got a story. He's got a story to be heard, and it's exclusive because none of us, you know, we've. You've seen the videos, we've all heard Ricky Hatton saying I'm not doing this and I don't know Junior Witt or anything, but obviously um, there's two sides to a story, you know, um, you've got to look at empathy and think, well, you're saying that, but why are you saying that and what was the real reason? And um, listen, come on, he's a WBC world champion, why would you not want to unify the division? Um, what, you know, listen, Floyd Mayweather may be the greatest fighter who ever laced up a pair of gloves. But the fact of the matter is, he moved up a weight um, and vacated the title, which Junior then on went on to to beat Chop Chop McCauley. So I don't know, you know, there's there's boxing's all about times, and uh, you know, <clears throat> a friend of mine, uh, Gary Sykes, he was telling me once. He said I I wanted the Liam Walsh fight for years, and they wouldn't have it. And then at the end, when he Gary was shot to bits, and uh, Liam Walsh was like, Yeah, I'll have that fight, and. Uh, and, you know, it's all boxing's all about timing and, you know, people who might not be ready for a fight and then in 18 months' time they'll take it. And there's a lot of things in boxing that, you know, maybe just taking a fight one or two early could be fatal. But um, it's it's why it's why it's probably, well, the most exciting sport in the world. And um, it takes some balls to get in the ring, regardless of what level you, you are. Um, whether you box with your face, like I did as a kid, uh, and the only thing you got out of it was a broken nose, or when you're someone who was who's done it all, like Junior Witter and Ricky Hattons and all that, um, 
you know, but there's a lot of dog eat dog. It's a dirty business. Um, and all that, and I was listening to a few stories of juniors, and when I sat with him for an hour, I thought, do you know what, mate, the more I've listened to you, your story's captivating, and um, and it's all new. So as a one, as a writer, as a boxing fan, I'm uh, I'm going to be really excited. Don't forget to click and subscribe to the page, guys. And um, if anyone wants any more information on the Junior Witter book, there's a Facebook page called Junior Witter The Avoided. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great weekend.